The common theme on both the debt ceiling and the border crisis is that they require a concerted effort from both the Democratic White House and a Republican House of Representatives to make a real breakthrough. But like a lot of things in Washington, that may be easier said than done. It's Ohio Republican Congressman David Joyce. Congressman Joyce, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to be on with you, Kristen. So I want to get your take on yesterday's high stakes meeting at the White House. You had Speaker McCarthy, President Biden coming out, basically taking jabs at each other, a whole lot of fireworks. Both sides seemed as dug in as when they went into the meeting. What was your takeaway and how concerned are you right now that the country could be headed for a default? Oh, I believe that, uh, yeah, as you know, here in D.C., there, there's a lot of uh, hand tying and, and worry that goes, takes place. But it is about as productive as a first meeting as you're going to have where everybody has a standoff. But it, right now, uh, the bill that we passed is the only bill in town. And it's the only game in town. And we're just waiting for the White House and for the Senate especially the Senate, to, to come up with something different or something better. I mean, we're, we're amenable to any discussion, and certainly Speaker McCarthy is as well, but uh, what we passed out there is certainly something that uh, everyone can easily understand. I want to ask you about the bill that you passed in just a moment, but I do want to ask you a little bit more about what we understand happened in that meeting. According to Senator Schumer, Speaker McCarthy was the only one in the meeting yesterday who would not commit to taking a default off of the table. Your reaction to that, and do you think that the hardline members in your caucus risk pushing him too far? No, I don't believe so. One thing that uh, has been very good about the what we witnessed in November and December and in the first couple of days of January before Kevin became the speaker was a consensus that he's now put in place and putting all the people at the table, like he's called his five families. And so we meet on a regular basis now and discuss and work through what it was going to be and, and the policies and, and plans that went into this bill. And I think it's important that we continue to do that moving forward. And right now we, we put out something that we all agree is workable, but realize that you know, now it's up to the Senate or the White House to come back with something different. And once they do, once they start to put together something, then we can have a good faith negotiation. But at the moment, ours is the only bill and plan in town, and we're going to continue down that road. So uh, asking us to negotiate against ourselves really isn't a good idea. But, but Congressman Joyce, what do you make of the fact that he wouldn't take a default off the table? How concerned are you? by hearing that? Well, you know, I, I, one thing about America is we're strong and we won't default on our debt. I get that. But we also need to control our spending. And it's a very straightforward things that we were asking for in order to control our spending. And, you know, certainly Senator Biden, now Vice President Biden, and now President Biden have been down this road before. And they know that this is the time to have those discussions. And so we have to have a date set certain. You notice that I don't think anybody in this town expected us to pass the bill. We passed the bill. And then all of a sudden the sky is falling. You know, we're going to cut this agency. We're going to cut that agency. Uh, the date all of a sudden moved up from mid-July to June 1st. I think they're, they're trying to apply panic where panic doesn't well, exist at the moment. Let me ask you about what's in the bill, because as you know, in that meeting yesterday, there was a lot of back and forth. Speaker McCarthy acknowledging that he said that it was a lie that the GOP wanted to cut veterans benefits. The president's essentially saying if you want to cut discretionary spending, it has to come from somewhere. So if it's not coming from veterans benefits, which, by the way, is like the second largest uh, pot mm -hmm. to cut from. Where is it coming from? Where are the cuts coming from? Well, you, you'll see when we put together our appropriations bills. But for the most part, but there's Congress nothing in this bill. Can, that... you, can you respond to the president who said, how can you negotiate with we'll see that, that there need to be well, specifics? You're making a good point, Kristen, but there's nothing. There's absolutely no language in the bill that says we're cutting veterans' benefits. There's nothing in this bill that says we were going to rescind the Butch Lee Act that uh, fixed the pension system for many of our union workers. Yet, those lies have been being told, and that somehow that we want to you know, crash up against the debt limit. All we did was put out a good-faith 
first offer, and we're waiting for the White House and the master negotiator that President Biden said he is to come to the table and start talking in specifics with Kevin, and then he can come back to the rest of us and we can make a deal accordingly. We did hear something that perked our ears up yesterday from the president. He seemed to open the door to the possibility of supporting clawing back unspent COVID funds uh, and also the possibility of energy permitting reform. Are those two areas of potential compromise for you? They're great first steps. You know, and I, I think that's important that he finally came to the table and started to negotiate because the American people want him to negotiate. I mean, the only one who gets away all the time is Mrs. Joyce. I mean, let's be real. You have to negotiate. Life is about negotiations. And so those are two good steps in the right direction. And now he has to talk about a little more about the spending plans going forward. Would you but the clawback, clawback provision is a good start for it because there's a lot of uh, money that's been put out there in the system that hasn't been spent and needs to be reallocated back to the Treasury. Before we move on to some other topics, would you support a short-term extension of the debt limit that lined up with the appropriations process, for example, in the fall and allowed you to essentially do both along parallel tracks so you could both declare victory, in essence. Well, I think it's premature to discuss that right now, Kristen, because while the president has made some statements that this might be available or he, might, he would consider some of these things, and those are great first steps, we need to get down to brass tacks. And if they thought it was such an urgent uh, a reason to meet yesterday, then why aren't they meeting today or tomorrow or continue to meet until June 1st, if that's truly the deadline? I'm here. I was willing to stay here and sacrifice my weekends and holidays and everything else to make this happen. And the rest of us stand united in doing that, too. They are going to meet Friday, though, and we understand that staffers have been meeting every day. Is that not a sign of, and I grant you, measured progress, a baby step at least? Sure, but, you know, and I love staffers. They make this place work, but the, the authority, the, the, the positions have to come from above, and you have to know what you can negotiate on. And so there has to be things on the table to work the mechanics out. All right, let me turn to politics, if I might. As you know, a jury <laughs> yesterday found former President Trump liable of sexual assault. Do you think that the former president has the character to serve another term in office as president? Uh, look, I, I think that uh, the system will work out and that they, uh, they will have primaries and there's going to be a number of candidates in these primaries. The field is not set and President Trump will be one of many. But I believe this time around it's not going to be quite the, as unique as it was in 16 for him. And there are a lot of things like yesterday's verdict that he's going to have to account to the American people for. Does he have your support at this point in time? I will support whoever the Republican nominee is, but right now it's not uh, anybody in particular because there's, there's, the field has not been filled out. You know, it's interesting. Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville said that that verdict makes him want to vote for Trump twice. And I guess that makes me think about the primary versus the general. Mm -hmm. Do you think that former President Trump, yes, he may be emboldened in some quarters of the Republican Party in a primary, but is he electable in a general election, do you think? You know, look, the American people are very smart. I don't think we give them enough credit. And they'll be able to see through this. And when we get down to the primaries, there are going to be some tough quick, uh, questions asked. I mean, I know when I go into town, uh, people, they don't, they're pretty good about asking me the questions they want to ask me when they see me in the supermarket or at Home Depot or you're working out in the morning. So I don't imagine they're going to be shy, and especially something as important as a presidential debate in a presidential election. I mean, I, I'd like to see some of the new uh, young people get involved in the system because I think there's some great people out there, great candidates that have been talking about running, and, and I look forward to a, an energetic debate. All right, and Congressman, finally, I know you're on the House Ethics Committee, but your Republican colleague, George Santos, was indicted by federal prosecutors today on fraud charges. He has pleaded not guilty. Do you have confidence in him as a colleague? Well, I, I cannot comment on the specifics of his case because I'm on the Ethics Committee, and so uh, any matter that might become before ethics uh, obviously uh, is something that I, I just can't comment on. But I would say that the historical precedent here has been, whether it was Jeff Fortenberry, uh, once he was indicted, he lost his committee assignments. Santos doesn't have any committee assignments. Or, you know, Senator Menendez, who lost his committee assignments, went on to trial and was acquitted. We allow the system to run its course and give everybody an equal opportunity in this country. And, uh, you know, Santos is at least deserving of that.
All right, Congressman David Joyce covered a lot of ground and I really appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you so much for being here. My pleasure, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.